All right, what's up? This is Uzo, formerly known as Super Slick Uzi, and today I'll be showing you guys how to sample. Uh, this is mainly for beginners, just to show you the method that I use. I feel it's very efficient and easy to learn. But um, if you have your own method, then you know, kudos to you. I hope this can help. And uh, here we go. So the first step is finding a good sample. I have one here that I picked out, and. Basically, what you want is anything at a bit rate higher than 128. So, um, this is my sample. I'm actually going to use it later, so don't uh, don't steal this. But what you want to do is open SliceX, which is a native VST to FL Studio, which means everybody should have it. Um, with SliceX. The thing that's good about it is that it actually saves the WAV file or the MP3, whatever you use. It saves it in the VST shell, which means that if you lose the file, like the sample that you use, if you lose it, then next time you open up SliceX inside of your project file, it'll still be there. Some people drag their samples up into the playlist up here, and the bad thing about that is if you go somewhere else and you don't have the file in the exact same place then um, you're out of luck so with SliceX it saves it and it actually increases the file size of the Fruity Loops file but it's worth not going through all that hassle anyway here's our sample um, usually I listen all the way through but I'm not going to do that because as you can see this is three minutes and 32 seconds and we don't have that kind of time so the first thing you do when you open up SliceX uncheck auto dump what that does is every time you make a chop it'll actually dump it to the piano roll and make these little green bars and it's stupid because it's all over the place and I hate it um and that's bad because if you change the chops it'll mess up everything anyway uncheck auto dump up here is the volume knob and this is the pitch you can ignore these middle two these are filters. This is low pass, band pass, band shelf, and high pass. And this is just like the intensity, I guess, or how sharp the curve is. Um, I don't really mess with too much of this over here. I don't know what an articulator is. That sounds like a go go gadget or something. Um, anyway, up here, I'll show you the things that you'll use the most. If you have a part of a sample that's really low, like at the end here, you can double click and drag to select and then you come up here to normalize and that brings the volume up to its peak but we don't want that so we press the undo button um, if you want to export samples I'll show you how to do that later but anyway this is what we're going to be using for the meme time this is the marker button and let's get started so we go ahead and play the sample and if you're wondering how I'm zooming in like this I'm clicking the middle mouse wheel where I scroll you press it down and you just move your mouse up and down and it scrolls um, it's great anyway so we get started and listen to our sample and I'm gonna actually press the marker button as we're listening to get the chops on the downbeat which you'll be able to see are the kicks here that we're gonna chop and we're only gonna get the first part because the guy sounds kinda annoying let's see So I messed up a little here, as you can see, if you right click on any of these segments where it's marked off, it'll just play that for you. So, And I actually didn't get on the downbeat. So the great thing is that I can move this marker to where I need it to be, which is on the kick. So it's on the downbeat and I get a good chop and I move all of them like that. Uh, you can zoom in pretty close, it's not really that necessary as long as you get it where you want it to be. I uh, usually want to chop according to the sample that you're using. So you want to get it like on the downbeat, like I said earlier, so it makes it easier. Um, later, you can experiment with new things. Um, 
as far as different chopping positions, but we're going to keep it simple for now. So I need this actually. And I want to cut this in half. This is, if you look at this length and then I have this length here, I'm going to cut this in half. Alright, so I have that. Um, next thing you want to do is say for instance you just want to start over chopping a beat instead of reopening this you would just click select all click on this little ABC icon then press delete and it deletes everything but we don't want to do that but that's for future reference now you need to decide if you want to pitch this up or down and this is what controls it I would suggest highlighting it then scrolling with your mouse wheel if you have one because if you look up in the top, when we scroll, it goes in even increments. And if you just click and drag, then things get kind of messy and pitch, you know, becomes a problem if you're adding extra instruments. So for now, we'll go up 300 cents. Go ahead and go to piano roll. And when you play it, you'll hear how it's pitched up. Even though when you listen to it here, it sounds the same. When we listen to it here, it's a lot um, higher so uh, the next thing you need to do is find the tempo which is very important because that it, once you get the tempo right then everything else you know is pretty easy as far as adding drums and other instruments so I'm gonna lay this out and see what we can do So obviously the tempo is wrong here and we need to right click, tap, and if I can think of it in my head, I think that's about right. I'll do 75 and let's see how that sounds. All right, so you see it ends right here on the second line. So I can bring my second sample marker two to here and I can actually make this shorter. And you know, the more uh, time that you spend actually messing around, the easier things get. So, um, earlier when we were going in and making sure that it hit, um, when we that we got our chops on the downbeat, that's what made it so important. Because when you come here to the piano roll, if you got it right, most times it'll make everything play really smooth when you play it back. Some old samples, the tempo changes in such little increments that you can't really get it right so it's gonna sound choppy but I think we got it right this time so you can see places where the sound cut out and that was because you know one of these wasn't chopped right or you know, they just had bad tempo back then. Um, so we'll play this. I'm not gonna fix that right now. But anyway, you get the, the basic idea. So now, I mean, the next point would be to add your drums and really go from there. Um, now that you have the tempo right and you have it chopped up the way you want it, you know, the sky's really the limit from here. So I hope I helped really explain things. Uh, I'll do a little example and add some drums just so you guys can see. This is my sample channel and I'll loop this and then I'll put some drums on here. Uh, and we'll play it. So I'll play the pattern, something really simple. And when we 
play it back and have it on our main playlist. So, I mean, that's really the basics of sampling. Um, things get a lot more complicated as, you know, it's all up to really what you want. So I hope I showed you guys something that you could use and I hope you learned something. Uh, be sure to subscribe and watch some more videos. Have a good day.